Hello everyone and welcome back to Average Nerd Talks. Now, last week, I nuked my uh, OS installation drive. Now, how did I manage to do that? Well, if you try to mess with your drives or your partitions using a partition management tool, so something like Gparted or KDE Partition, management, KDE Partition Manager, then things can go wrong. In some cases, when you're trying to move partitions around, you can potentially lose all of your data, which is basically what happened to me because the partition table of that hard drive was corrupted while data was being moved or while that partition was being moved. Essentially, what that, what that means is I lost all of my data, uh, at least whatever was on that drive. So I had to reformat it and uh, reinstall my operating system and restore the data from whatever backups I had. Now, I made a mistake and <laughs> I really should have backed up my entire system drive uh, before I try to you know, mess around with partitions, but you know, uh, I got complacent. I shouldn't have done that. And uh, just that very small chance that something will go wrong and it actually did. So the good thing is I had uh, backed up all of my personal documents and files, and I usually do that regularly. And I have set up tools which do that regularly for me. So there was no severe loss or I, I didn't lose any personal data or any, you know, photos, videos, and any of my personal memories and things like that. You know, this is, this is the real important stuff. Stuff that you cannot replace is what you need to be backing up. But yeah, I had to reinstall my OS and set up everything just as I liked it, just as it was before, because I didn't have the config files either. In this video, I'll show you six different tools which you can use for backing up your data. These are all free and open source tools. Some of them are cross-platform, so you can use them to back up, you know, uh, devices which don't run Linux on them. Whenever you back up your data, there's a three, two, one rule that you should be following. You should have three total copies of your data. You should have two backup copies and one of those backup copies should be offline or off-site. At number six, we have rsync. Now, rsync is a copy tool with incremental updates, meaning that if you have two folders which are mostly identical uh, with one folder having some differences, then when you copy this folder over to the other one using rsync, it's only going to change or it's only going to update the uh, folder with things that have changed. Like for example, if you have certain files which have some new content being added to it or certain files which have changed, then when rsync copies over these files, it'll only change or only copy over what has changed rather than the entire file itself. Now rsync is typically a one-way synchronization tool, meaning it'll copy from one folder to the other folder and it won't synchronize changes. So if there's changes in one folder and you're copying it to the other folder, if there are certain files that are older in this one, it's gonna copy over here. So yeah, you need to be careful when it comes to rsync in this way. rsync also supports exclude and include lists, meaning you can selectively copy over things that you want. And uh, it can also copy over uh, on network. So like using SSH, for example, uh, it also supports compression over a network. So let's say you have um, a computer or a server, which is not on your local network, which is probably located elsewhere, which you access over the internet. It can compress data while it's sending it over the internet to save you bandwidth and probably transfer a lot faster. Now, the disadvantage here is that this is a command line only utility. So if you're not very comfortable with the terminal, then it is a little difficult to use and uh, exclude and include lists also expect you to know how regular expressions work, which means that, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a little bit difficult for new users to pick up and just use. However, since it's a command line based utility, you can actually write scripts and have it run with crontab. Now, uh, if you're a beginner, you probably don't know what crontab is. Crontab is a uh, terminal based or text based scheduling utility, which is available on practically every Linux operating system out there. It's not as difficult to use as it initially looks. If you actually look up the documentation, you can use it to schedule literally anything to run at literally any time. Now, if you want to use rsync with a GUI or a graphical interface, there is something called grsync, which is a uh, GUI tool to use rsync, but it is a little bit limited in its functionality. And if you really want to take full advantage of rsync, it would be better if you learn how to use the terminal version of it. At number five, we have rclone. 
Artlon is a Terminal-based backup utility similar to RSync, but it also supports 50 different cloud backends. So you can actually back up your data to something like Google Drive, Dropbox, Amazon Web Services. Well, most of the cloud services that you can think of, Artlon probably has it implemented. Artlon also has the same drawbacks that RSync has, which is it's difficult to use for beginners since it's entirely terminal based. Uh, configuring it initially for uh, working with certain cloud services is also not very simple and very straightforward and requires some reading into documentation and um, you know understanding how the configuration and everything works. However, um, since it's a terminal-based utility, it's also very easy to, well, not easy, but it's also possible to use it with something like Grontab in order to write scripts and schedule your cloud backup uh, service. The other advantage that you get is it's actually multi-threaded as compared to rsync, which is single-threaded. When I say multi-threaded, it means that if your processor has multiple cores, like if it's an eight core or 16 core or whatever processor, then our clone can take advantage of that versus our sync, which is typically only going to use one core at a time. At number four, we have free file sync. Now free file sync is a graphical utility, which is also cross platform. So you can use it on Mac, Windows and Linux. Um, it is a bit clunky when it comes to its GUI. So it does take some uh, learning to actually figure out how it works but it is a really good tool if you're willing to manually you know um, synchronize your data um, at regular intervals it does have an automatic backup solution where it can uh, scan your files in real time and then uh, you know perform its synchronization function or its transfer function or backup whatever uh, it can do that automatically in real time but it's a bit tedious to set up so if you are willing to go through a lot of documentation to figure out how it works and figure out how to set it up it's a great utility the good thing is that you don't really have to rely on a terminal on like um, rsync or R clone so it is still easier to use than any of these utilities free file sync also supports some cloud services i've had success using it with google drive but i haven't tried it with any other service so your mileage may vary at number three, we have Time Shift. Now, Time Shift comes by default on Linux Mint installation. So, in case you're on Linux Mint, you already have Time Shift on your system. It has a pretty simple and straightforward GUI to manage your backups, and it actually sets itself up, or at least urges you to set it up when you install your operating system. So, it is always running in the background. Now, Time Shift actually uses rsync in the back end to back up your data, right? So if you know how to use rsync, well, uh, time shift is kind of just an automated way to use rsync. So rsync and cron tab is essentially time shift. But the best thing about time shift, I believe, is the set and forget nature of it, wherein you can set it to backup and you can completely forget about it. The only drawback here that I can think of is that it is going to back up all your data on disks that are already connected to your computer. So an internal hard drive or maybe the same drive that uh, you have your operating system on. So you do need to periodically um, copy that data off your system onto say an external drive or you know something similar, maybe a network drive or a NAS. Now one very significant advantage that you have with time shift is that you can actually boot from a live uh, bootable USB. So something like your Linux Mint installation, uh, you can plug that into your computer, boot from that, and then use time shift to restore your computer based on an existing backup, which I think is pretty cool because then you don't really need to, uh, you know, figure out any restore steps. So if your computer is not booting and you have no idea what to do, you don't really need to rely on a command line based utility to restore your data. Time shift can do that for you in a nice clean GUI in a live boot environment. At number two, we have sync thing. Now sync thing is not technically a backup tool. It is a synchronization utility. So kind of like uh, Dropbox or Google Drive or OneDrive. So it allows you to synchronize files between different devices. So 
unlike uh, Google Drive or uh, OneDrive, which synchronizes to a cloud service, SyncThing can allow you to synchronize files across devices which are connected to the same network. So for example, if you have um, a desktop and a laptop and a phone, you can actually use SyncThing to keep certain folders in sync with all of these devices. Now, I personally use SyncThing to keep things in sync between my laptop, my desktop, and my own personal server that I have at home. So I can actually have three copies of all of my data in general. And then the only thing remaining here is the offsite backup. So you remember the three, two, one rule? This is just one backup because this backup is still online, meaning it can still be corrupted while it's in use. When I said you need an offline backup, it means that this backup should not be connected to any system. So you copy stuff onto, the, onto that backup drive. It could be a USB drive or it could be another network device. And then you take that USB device off your computer or you turn off whatever network service you're using to periodically back up your stuff. Now, although SyncThing is not technically to be used as a backup service, it does have certain synchronization uh, parameters which you can set up. So you can set up your um, folders to send only. For example, if you want to back up all the photos from your phone to your computer, then your phone, uh, phone's camera folder could be set up for send only, meaning it won't synchronize changes, it'll only send changes. And your desktop could be set up, or your laptop could be set up for receive only, meaning it will only receive changes from your phone. This way, if you delete something on your computer, it's not gonna delete from your phone. So I mentioned that you can actually synchronize with your phone, but SyncThing supports Android only for now. There is an unofficial app for iOS called Mobius Sync, which does work with SyncThing, but I don't know because I haven't used it, so I don't know how well it actually works. Now, before we go to our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. First one is Resilio Sync. Now, Resilio Sync is not open source. It's free for personal use, but it has limited features for uh, personal, for you know, free audiences. It does support iOS and Android, and it does, does support most devices using Mac, Windows, or Linux. Uh, so it is cross-platform. It supports most synchronization and backup uh, stuff that you would need, even within its limited feature set. But I won't include this in my um, original list. Uh, because it's not open source and it is limited for uh, free users. Now the second honorable mention is Git, not GitHub. GitHub is a cloud-based implementation of Git. Now Git is simply a versioning system, meaning it can save different versions of your file across time, right? So suppose you made a change, you made changes to a certain files, say three days ago, and you want to restore your uh, files to that specific version, you can actually do that, right? And every time you make changes to your files, it's gonna save um, a version of that file at that point in time. So it is kind of like, you know, a time machine based system where you can actually go back in time at any commit that you have made to your files and get that specific version of the file back. Now the disadvantage to Git is that it typically works best with text-based documents. So if you're writing code, if you're writing, say, a book, you're writing essays, documents, reports, um, you know, even Excel sheets or things like that, then Git is a fantastic tool to keep your documents versioned and keep backups of your documents, you know, offline or offsite if you want. You can have a local Git versioning system on your computer, which keeps, um, you know, versions of your documents, and you can have a remote repository. So when I say remote repository, it could be on a USB disk, for example, or a flash drive. It could also be on a local network. So you could have a NAS or network attached storage, and you could have a repository there. You could have a repository on your cloud service, like on Google Drive or something, or on Dropbox, right? All of that works. 
GitHub is only one such cloud-based implementation of Git. So when I'm working with uh, my files, my work, I typically use the Git command line interface or the terminal interface, but if you prefer a graphical user interface, uh, there is a GitHub desktop, which is available for uh, Windows and Mac. Now GitHub, although it's, it's GitHub desktop, it can work with local Git repositories or you know your personal customized Git repositories. Uh, otherwise, if you want something that's cross-platform that works with Windows, Mac, and Linux, I personally recommend something called Guitar. Um, there are a whole lot of other tools and a lot of GUI utilities. If you are a coder, you're probably using VS Code. VS Code has an extension which can actually manage your Git repositories really, really easily. I'm not gonna go over all the GUI options here, but you can probably find whatever suits your needs. So the number one tool I recommend for most users is Pika Backup. Now Pika Backup is extremely easy to use and configure. It allows you to backup your data to an external hard drive. It also allows you to backup your data to a network drive or a network attached storage or NAS. It even has cloud backup. So you can back up stuff to your Google Drive or your Microsoft OneDrive. I don't know why you use Microsoft OneDrive, but yeah, you can use it to back up to Microsoft OneDrive. It also supports exclude lists like the way rsync does and most other backup utilities do. And it has scheduling. So you can actually schedule all your backups in your nice little GUI and your nice little interface and it will do all of your backing up for you. I think this is one of the best utilities you could get if you are a beginner and the only thing you really need is to keep a backup on say an external device or a cloud service. So what backup solution do you use if you're actually using one? Um, do you have any other tools that you'd like to recommend to the community? Let me know down in the comments below. So guys, if you like this video, hit like. If you didn't like it, hit dislike and let me know why down in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Make sure to hit that bell notification icon so that you get notified every time I put out a new video. Stay safe everyone, make sure to keep your computers backed up, I'll see you all in the next one.